quick shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey y'all, it's Kay from Literary Apothecary and welcome back to another episode of Books My Boyfriend Gave Me. Now today we're going to be talking about Dark Passage, which is book six in the Kingdom Keepers series. I have just one book left in this series. I'm actually reading it right now. It's one of my current reads. Um, this book, book six, I gave four and a half out of five stars. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Um, so this book picks up directly where we left off in book five, where if you remember the two of the kids that jumped off of the ship, the cruise ship into the ocean. And that's where book five left us. Book six picks up directly into that. And it felt as if the writer Ridley Pearson just wrote one giant book and then split it up in between book five and book six. Um, so the our five kingdom keepers plus some friends have discovered a startling truth. Maleficent and the Overtakers are plotting a catastrophic event that could have repercussions far beyond the world of Disney. Up until now, we thought that Maleficent and crew just wanted to take over the Disney parks, the world of Disney, but now they're thinking maybe it goes even beyond this and to just the world in general. And so they're now, ab they're aboard the Disney Cruise Lines uh, inaugural passage through the new Panama Canal. The keepers and their holograms uncover a puzzle hidden within the pages of a stolen journal that was believed to once belong to Walt Disney himself. Um, the point of this puzzle will reveal itself in the caves of Aruba, the zip lines of Costa Rica, and the jungles of Mexico. A destructive force dormant for decades is about to be unleashed and the five kingdom keepers are to be its first victims. So they have to rush and solve this puzzle and figure out what the answer means. Trying to save Disney, the world, and themselves all at the same time. And don't forget, these are just kids. They're now high school kids. Um, so what I loved about this book, we picked up right where we left off from book five. Um, a lot of times when we have a cliffhanger in a series, the next book will start at some place totally different than where the last book left off. And then we'll circle back to the events at the end of the last book. However, in this book, book six, we picked off, picked up literally exactly where we left off from book five. The kids are in the ocean after they just jumped in and they're trying to figure out how to survive now. It felt like there was a well-developed, matured plot line, as, kind of like the Harry Potter books, as the books got on and the characters got a little bit older, our plot lines got a little bit more mature and darker. Um, and there are, without giving away spoilers, there are very, very serious consequences at last that the Kingdom Keepers have to face in this book. Up until now, the mistakes that they've made, they've been able to recover from. There haven't been an awful lot of terribly serious consequences in, the, in these books, but book six changes that dramatically. There are terrible consequences that they have to face in this book. Um, I also liked the tie-in with mythology and history and the location that they're in. There was a lot of kind of, not necessarily an info dump because it didn't feel like a dump, um, but there's a lot of information packed into this one book that could be very informational for kids, um, even for adults. Like I learned so much in this. I love the mythology and the history and the, you know, the history of the locations, everything was tied in perfectly to the plot. It didn't feel like we're just giving this information for no reason. It felt like we we're giving this information 
for a specific reason that tied in with the plot and all the events that are happening here. Um, what didn't work for me is the pacing. There were times when the pacing felt a little off and it was hard to keep track of what was happening where. Um, and our unreliable narrators. I have a hard time with unreliable narrators, especially ones like in this case where the characters, the narrators don't know who to trust, trust and that comes through in the writing. For me, I do not like that kind of unreliable narrator. Um, some people do. Some people like that ride. I don't, so that is one of the things that didn't really work for me. But overall, I thought it was a very well written four and a half out of five stars. And I am now on the last book I have to read in this series, which happens to be the first book in the actual series, book one, which is very different than the rest of the series, I feel like. Um, and once I finish that, I will have a overall series review coming out talking about my favorite book in this series, my least favorite, and a whole bunch of information about the series. So stay tuned next week for another episode of Books My Boyfriend Gave Me. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.